I mean, you know, March, whatever day that was, March 16th or whatever, we'll kind of, you know, just a minute, I've got a little picture in the middle of my screen there. Um, so when the pandemic, you know, all of a sudden got going and the shelter in place happened, you know, a year ago last March, it put a lot of us obviously in a real um, bind. And um, I can't imagine what kind of a bind it put the providers in of, of daycares. Um, for myself, teaching nurses, teaching students pediatrics, um, where a good portion of their time is spent in the hospital, they were all of a sudden kicked out of the hospital. And so, and that's a huge part, you know, dealing with kids, touching kids, feeling what kids are like is the whole thing about pediatrics. You can't talk about that stuff. You've got to experience it. And so through a variety of interesting um, connections, we got hooked up with Michelle. And at that point it was Denise, I can't remember what Denise. Turner. Turner, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and um, who else was really important in the beginning was Kim Johnson. So she was very, very involved in the very beginning. And so we started talking about what we can do to support the childcare providers um, as far as figuring out how to provide childcare in this situation that was so scary for so many of us, particularly around infection control and COVID, you know, COVID control. And then how could that help us as far as teaching our students how to take care of children? And so what has kind of developed over the last, you know, 16 months now is a really strong collaboration between Samuel Merritt University and Alameda County Early Care and Education and the that em emergency response team, um, uh, public health, and has really created a wonderful collaboration. And really what I feel is a real win-win situation for both groups. And so what we're, and the reason it's really a win-win is for our students, they are learning they're getting in there, they're doing health teaching, and they're doing a lot of work with children and providers. They're learning about children. They're learning an amazing amount about children, about child development, about what makes kids click, about how you teach kids and things like that. Um, and they're getting their clinical hours by doing that. And then on the other side of that, the other half of that win is what it's giving to providers, hopefully, is um, a lot of assistance with, and you know, in the beginning, it was you know, how do I deal with COVID and what do I think about COVID and what temperature am I supposed to be watching for and how do I social distance my children? And we're still definitely doing that. And we have increased and sort of expanded our, our program as health heroes for childcare to do a lot to mitigate the effects of COVID, to do a lot to help providers as they're opening up their, their um, centers or, you know, their, their childcare um, facilities for the first time or continuing to support them in health promotion ways. As I said, in the beginning, a lot of it was just about how do you social distance? How do you wash hands? What temperature are we gonna be looking for? But we've really included now a lot of other um, um, health maintenance and health promotion activities that we're, that we're really going to do. Um, nothing really stays the same. And, you know, as you've all seen, I mean, how many times have you said to people over the last year, oh, be patient. Oh, we're not sure. Oh, this is changing. And, you know, same thing with us. And so every single time we have had students there, things have changed a little bit. But at this point, it, the program that we have with Alameda County Early Care and Education is an integral part of our curriculum at Samuel Merritt University. So this wasn't, it, as it started out, it, we first were doing this because students weren't getting to get into the hospital. Well, students are getting back in the hospital, but what we have found over this year is that we can provide a really, really valuable service for you, and you can provide a really valuable service for us as far as teaching our students, because they're meeting children where we see children. We're not, you know, they're meeting children in the, in the community rather than necessarily seeing them in the hospital. Is hospital nursing still a part of what they're doing in their education? Yeah, sure it is. But we're finding that this is equally as important with what we're doing. So it's really a, um, a critical part of, of their education. Um, so to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what, you know, what does this look like? I mean, what does this mean for you? Um, and, and we have about, we have several different programs at Samuel Merritt University. We've got a 
you know, just several different programs. And so as a result, we have about um, six to, I'm sorry, we have about six to eight um, different five week cohorts of students that are going through pediatrics. So all year long, we have students going through pediatrics. And what we will do is we, we, when we have, when I have a group coming in, we will have those students work in pairs and each pair will go to a childcare site, whether it's uh, you know, a big center or whether it's a small family daycare, whatever it is, childcare, whatever it is, we will match students with different sites. And the way that we match them in these sites is we look at geography and we look at language. And so if we've got centers that are or sites that are um, really, um, you know, heavy Spanish speaking or uh, Mandarin or things like that, we have we see if we have students that speak those languages and then we will put them in sites that work well for that. That's a good combination, you know, a good fit as far as that goes. Um, well, students actually do come to your site. It's not a remote thing. And one thing that I just wanna say now about that is Samuel Merritt is requiring all of our students to be vaccinated, okay? And I think that's important for you to know from the standpoint of people's fears about having more people come into, into your facility, especially if it's in a family, family child care that is relatively small. And so just, I really want you to know that, that we are definitely putting um, people in, um, you know, people have been vaccinated. So, the students will be working with you for, it's over a period of about four weeks, um, usually coming into your site, starting out by first contacting you and finding out what your needs are. You know, we know what we have done in the past. We know what kind of has worked for us in the past, but what we really want to know is what do you need? Is what you need um, help with screening kids when you're coming in? You know, is what you need to figure out how can I, you're just opening say, and how can I social distance children? And a lot of these are sort of more COVID related things, um, but you know, how can I, um, my kids are having a, a hard time with washing their hands. How can we help them with washing their hands? So our students will talk to you, the providers and say, what do you need? You know, what do you think the, the, the important things are that you need? What would you like us to provide for you related to health promotion? whether it's related to COVID and related to infection control, or whether it's related to safety, or it's related to good nutrition, or it's related to um, you know, exercise. It could be related to a whole bunch of different things. Um, so they will be contacting you first to find out what you want them to do. And then they will pattern their teaching based on what you want them to do. So if you say, I my parents are really freaked out about um, kids coming back to the childcare. Well, maybe what my students can do is they can put together an FAQ sheet that answers a lot of their questions and they can maybe even have an online meeting with them. I mean, these are all things that we have done with them in the past. But so it really is very much based on what you're doing, what your desire is to have them there. Our, our mission is to support you. We're not there to, um, you know, if we say we're gonna come in and talk about hand washing, we're not there to be the hand washing police. You know, we're not there to say, oh, you're not washing your hand right. We're there to educate and to support. That's really, that's really, really important for us to be um, talking about that. So usually students, um, the number of days that they are with a provider varies anywhere from probably four to six days. But part of that is just meeting with you to sort of do a needs assessment. So they will talk to you about what it, is, what it is you want. Then they will go back and talk with their faculty. They all have RNs that are their supervisors and plan out what kind of teaching plan they wanna do. And so every day that they come in, they will be doing some things as far as assisting you with, like I said, with screening, with disinfecting, with you know, just general child you know, care, um, modeling good hand washing, modeling good infection control. And then they will also put together a teaching plan that they will have, have gone over with you to say, this is what I'd like to talk about. I wanna talk about hand washing and I'm going to you know, talk a little bit about it, put some glitter on their hands and let them practice washing their hands till the glitter is gone. I'm going to, you know, there's just so many different things that they have done. So, but they will let you know, they'll talk to their instructor and they will talk to you about, this is what we would like to, this is the, you know, the teaching plan I would like to do today. So as far as the number of teaching plans, the number of times they will actually come in, spend half of the day with you 
and incorporate a teaching plan is probably three to four days. So they do time in the beginning as far as the needs assessment, but as far as the number of days are actually in your site is three to four times. Um, and um, yeah, that's, those are the main and, things. And they, that, and they really can do a range of, of teaching activities. And again, tailored to what each operator, you know, is lead teacher operators interested in. So they've done arts and crafts kinds of activities. They've done puppet shows. They've done, um, you know, science, sciencey kind of projects, which is pretty fun. And, um, and I know Shruti has some of her own experiences about because she's worked with a number of the cohorts. So we're on our 11th cohort. So Shruti's done four of the 11, <laughs> and four of the 10. So, because we're actually only done 10 so far, we're planning for the 11th cohort. So I think it would be great, Shruti, if you could share your firsthand experience, because I, 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 think, the, I think the student nurses are most successful when they work with an operator who's really clear about what they want. Um, so I, I love for you to share with everybody else what you shared with us. I, I had a great experience. I was pretty clear from day one and I actually started when COVID started. So it is not that I started mid or something when the first cohort came in, I started then. Um, and I was very clear with them. I don't want to discuss COVID or anything around COVID with my kids because as it is, we are all listening to COVID so much. Mm -hmm that it just builds in that anxiety into us and the kids every time we hear why we have to do this, you know? So, and they were really good. My kids have done yoga. My, uh, my kids have done uh, healthy eating, which was a big hit. And I was talking to Lily yesterday. I had a kid who only ate peanut butter and jelly sandwich every day, nothing else, just peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And when we did this, the, the teachers came and spoke to him. And that day and today, I think this was the second group that we had. And from that day to today, that kid rotates his lunch every time he's eating um, healthy. And every time he says, Shruti, tell the nurses I'm eating healthy. They can come back whenever they are ready. I'm eating healthy. So, so you know, they just didn't even come and teach and play with the kids, but they left a long lasting impression on the kids to do something which was good for them, you know? And, and the parents were surprised because the kid who never touches greens was <laughs> eating broccoli and spinach. That was like a big for us. Like I have to literally beg the kid, please eat a fruit, please eat a fruit. Now, every day in his lunch, he brings a veggie, a fruit, peanut butter jelly sandwich or uh, turkey and cheese out of the two. But now his his uh, choices have expanded from what it was, just peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And that's, that's a big plus. Second thing that I felt with my third group was they did yoga with my kids. And they, they said to them, when you get upset or when you don't understand what's going on, say, oh, and every time my kids are like, when they don't know what the answer is or anything, they wherever they are, even if they're peeing, they say, oh, <laughs> it's not coming, oh, it's not coming. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, you made us in the bathroom, but it's not coming. So we are trying to calm oh, our yeah. mind and body. So, it comes. Like, so, so these are experiences that, I mean, we laugh on it uh, when we discuss this with parents, but it, it is a positive experience that we as adults forget at times that, oh, when, when we are stressed, we can just say, oh, or meditate and something happens in your body. You know, <laughs> I mean, if we all do it, we might have, we might have not had that anxiety when we had last year. So, so when kids are learning that it really brings a, a, a positive perspective to the program as well as, as what we are teaching the kids. I mean, definitely the nurses were teaching the kids, but my kids look forward to it and they, have bought statoscopes here. My kids have gone crazy listening. Like, can we listen to the heartbeat? And then they came to me and said, Mishruti, you don't have a heart. No wonder you <laughs> all get upset at us. And I'm like, what? I have a heart, it beats, you know? So the kids have had real fun with them. They look forward to it. Every time I tell them, 
oh, they're going to come. I have had parents tell me, my kid was up at five o'clock because the nurses are coming today. Like okay. they have been super excited for the nurses to come. And I've had kids who cry when the nurses say, oh, today's my last day. We are going. So, so that's been a very, very positive experience. And that's why whenever I get an email, I say, yes, I will take them in. You don't have a place. I will take them in. Uh, so um, so I, would, I would definitely say everybody should at least give them chance once. They, my parents actually told me they're fine if they're taking off their masks, but none of them took off their masks. They were, they were very, very accommodating. Uh, I had to shut down my program because of a COVID scare. And I forgot that the health heroes were supposed to come in and they came in and I said, oh my God, I am shut, you know? And I felt bad because they came all the way from Oakland to my program and I forgot to tell them. But very politely, they, they understood the situation. And I was like, oh, I, I think I miss it. emailed both of you that this is what's going on. You know, I had to close down, but thankfully nothing happened. But, but that was a positive experience for me, you know? At that time, I was super, super stressed with, when you hear something like that. And when somebody walks to your door and you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot to tell you guys. You know, and, and they just smiled and said, it's okay. We can drive back home. Uh, let us know when you need us back. Um, and that, that is like, oh, you don't feel so guilty about it, even though I was very guilty. Um, so that, that was really, really nice. But more than that was the smile I see on my kid's face every time. Uh, they come in and whatever they teach. So even today I tell my nurses anything but COVID. So we have done, we've done yoga. We've done back, back, uh, uh, backyard activities. Uh, we have done, we've done germs with paint. Definitely we've done nutrition twice. Um, we've done puppets and uh, and they've, they've done a small story with the kids and the kids have, have loved it. So every time and uh, they come, they do something different. And I think, it, and correct me, Michelle and Lily, if I'm wrong, they know what the previous uh, health nurses did in my program. Mm -hmm. So there's never a rep repetitive stuff that happens in my program every time they come in, which is good because at times I forget and I would still hold give them a yoga book and say, you can do yoga. And they said, but this is already done, you know? And then we sit down and discuss. So it is nice. Um, the first time they come for introduction, that is the best part. And I've said it zillion and zillion of times that made me so comfortable because I could talk to them and see who's coming into my program. Mm -hmm. What will they bring in for the kids uh, and how they can help the program. Instead of having somebody knock on my door and say, oh, we are here let us know what to do, you know? So I think ma making that relationship was really very important for me um, as, as a provider. And, and I, everybody on this group or anybody who might be listening to this, I would say once give them a chance. They are they're professional, they are trained. They're extremely loving towards kids. Um, imagine if my kids are telling me I don't have a heart, I'm sure they've taken a little space of their heart with them. So, so give them a chance. And I think you wouldn't regret it. And like me, you would say, oh, whenever you have openings, send them to me. Uh, because I'm, I'm again registered for July, if I'm not wrong. You I are send correct. Them yes. Send them back in July. I'm ready. My kids are ready. So, so yeah, please uh, give them a chance. Uh, one question I had, somebody asked me, do you also send health nurses to centers? Child yes. Care yes. Yes. To centers, oh yes, yes. They stay in one classroom, so they're assigned to a classroom. They don't move around in this, I mean, partly because of COVID, we didn't have them moving around in the center, but um, yes, they've, we've been doing both. And we actually did a round of virtual support where to providers where the, uh, where they were, there's places who were afraid and, and a lot of them were family childcare homes afraid of having additional people come in. And so early on, we did some virtual sessions that the nurses, um, student nurses supported. And I know some folks were helping with some, you know, parent issues and 
um, I know I know we've been talking about you know what what are the changing needs out there, um, which I think you would understand better even than we, but uh, I think there'll be a time when when you're talking about vaccinations for younger kids that that will be an issue that would might be helpful to have nurses to work with your um, families around. And I think routine health um, appointments that a lot of families have deferred those we know from the research. And so, you know, how to support families to make sure that they're getting in and doing their routine um, pediatric visits. So and they keep I, up to date with their other vaccinations, right? Yeah, there's so I, I, I have about 15 uh, of us here from the association and I know some of you have not had the health heroes here and it would be a nice uh, time if you could unmute and let Michelle and Lily know what was your biggest fear for not having them in your program and if you are ready uh, then let us know why you're ready now. Hi can I talk? Hi. Yeah. Yeah, Hi, so I was the one who had that center doubt because, you know, I have an infant program in Pleasanton and you know how that age group is and like children pretty much fall sick and I know I'm like, we are on top of the cleaning, we do everything possible, teachers are always on top of things like they're washing, they're sanitizing, inspecting, but there's always something going on there and I just like, I don't know how to figure it out and I was just telling Shruti, uh, I'm, I'm planning to actually even hire someone just to just to keep an eye what we're doing wrong like so this like having an you know this particular program would be very beneficial for us but I wanted to know if you guys do come and help specifically just in the infant classroom an infant did you say yes it's from six months <laughs> baby to uh, 23 months. Yeah, it, in yeah. terms of matching classrooms, that's really up to the operator to, you know, if there's multiple classrooms, like we- There are no multiple classrooms, just one classroom. You just have but one yeah, classroom no, with would, infants. Yeah. yeah, we would definitely have kids, have um, students come to an infant room. Um, because, you know, like you said, it, it, some of the issues are very different. You know, you don't have a three-year-old that's going smearing their germs all over each other, but you do have babies that you're constantly holding. And so you may be the vector as passing the organisms around. So yeah, definitely. They would be, you know, it would be happy. Oh my gosh, my students would be thrilled to go see a bunch of babies. You can <laughs> I love that. Oh, what? <laughs> baby, trust me, they will love it. It's just that, you know, we, we are already having like a whole basket of like soil toys and mouth toys, right. everything is there. But still there is something on and off that some health issues is going on. All other our classrooms are doing well. It's just this, this one. And I'm pretty sure like, you know, nurses will have like double eye, where whatever exactly. we are failing to exactly. do, they will have an eye for it. So yeah. I, I mean, like infection, the, infection control is such an enormous part of nursing school, <laughs> you know, from the day they start nursing school till the last day of nursing school, we are harping on them about infection control. I talk so much about it in pediatrics because it's different. You know, these are kids that can't control their, their bodily secretions. And so, so yet, yeah, I mean, they would be very happy to come and, and do that. And, and what they will do is they will, you know, they'll talk to you about what your needs are. And you, you do say, gosh, I just, someone's always getting sick here. And so then what they do is they go home and then they research it. You know, they figure out, okay, what can I do? What would be a good way to teach? Whether it's, how am I going to teach a three-year-old about hand washing, or how am I going to mainly in this situation be teaching providers about what's best practices for hand washing, how to wash hands. And not that they're saying you're doing it wrong, but if but it's you're asking, and then they're saying, this might be something that will be helpful, you know, this. And so, and then they also run it by us. They run it by the RNs. So the nurses are saying, yeah, you might want to look at, look at this article. It says this about, you know, so. Of course, um, of course. Yeah, yeah. Any, yeah. any extra is a great, yeah. Because we have four teachers in that classroom. I'm pretty sure somewhere something is going wrong mm -hmm. and it's always great to have like experts there, you know, keeping an eye. Where do we register? Please do pass that link and I, I am ready to register. So, I mean, really the, these are um, being offered as consultants to you. Like that's what you, you know, it's they're in-kind consultants that are being made available through the emergency response team and and Lily and then, and then 
ongoing. We've already branded the program there, you know, even after recovery, there's a plan to keep up the program. Um, and we're, we've been trying to make sure that new programs that haven't had the nurses, the student nurses before get prioritized, but we also really appreciate the the folks that hang in. I'm like a new 30. program. I have never used the hero. Oh, good, yeah. That's great. Shruti, did you have somebody else who wanted to share? Or? Well, I never I never did it in the past because I wasn't full. I only had my granddaughter and maybe one other boy. But now that I'm full, thanks to Shruti. Uh -huh. um, I, I, my, my age range is from the youngest I have is uh, five months and the oldest is four. Oh yeah, so, and I'm a, and it's Perfect. just me. So I wow. would definitely, I think the kids would get a big kick out of it, um, you know. And I just think it would be a nice, you know. I just never thought about doing it for one or two children, but now I have, I have consistently six to eight, almost every day. Oh so. yeah, yeah. And now I've got two more babies coming in in August, so that oh. would be perfect. So. Great. So Michelle, what would be the right way to uh, connect? Uh, would it be you guys? It's or an would it excellent be segue. Yes. Because we, you know, we did just take a break, right? And we're, and you remember, Shruti, I sent out the email saying, but we'll be back in July. Um, so we're getting ready to come back in July. Uh, I have staff currently, right now, um, working on translating the flyers, updating the flyers and like we're changing some of that language on the flyers. So it's not so COVID specific because yeah. I think it sends the wrong message. So it's really about health promotion, you know, matching the activities that you want. Um, so within the next week, uh, an email will be coming out from the r &Rs, but I'll make sure that you get it directly, Shruti, so you can share it with your group. Um, and, and if you all get it twice, so be it. You just need to register once. There's a, in the email, it'll connect you with the flyer. In the flyer, there's a, it says click here. You go to the link and you just register and then you register for which cohort sessions you're interested in. And we're only right now planning for the next three cohorts. So July, September, oh, no, October. October. Yeah. And if you want someone for all three, that's fine too, but it, you know, it's, um, so you can click on all three, you can click on just one, you say, yeah, I'm not really ready now, but, but August sounds like, or September sounds like a good time. So that's, you know, it's fine with us. And there's just some questions, like if you do have families who speak other languages where you feel like the nurse, student nurses could be supportive in your communication with families, um, there's a place for you to let us know that that kind of thing and then the eight you know sort of the age ranges of your children which can be helpful um I think and that, we, have students, I, we have students that speak all kind i mean you know i know for for in the beginning the, we were kind of thinking the diversity of languages of the students oh yeah incredible really. yeah i mean we were like, thinking oh mandarin and spanish but i mean gosh we you know those are sort of but the, we've the, got they've they've sometimes we'll have more people speaking of. farsi than spanish you know or we'll having people you know speak different different african dialects and so it's pretty you know it's pretty um not that you know i mean whether you're you know, depending on if you've got it, student, I mean, you know, kids. It that matches doesn't... the population of the county. The student population matches the population of the county, which yeah. is really nice. And, yeah. and I just want to Not highlight. Not in every cohort. I just want to highlight before anybody starts putting it up on any Facebook groups or anywhere, this is just for Alameda County. Yes. <laughs> so let's we, not yeah. put it in any of the groups. Otherwise, uh, I, I don't think... Uh, if I'm not wrong, Lily, you said this is just for Alameda County right now, right? It is now. And we're talking about expanding because Samuel Merritt has students that are actually in, in San Mateo County, San Francisco County, and Sacramento County. So, you know, this is enough for us right now, but we would love to. And I actually have one faculty who is just dying to be hired to full time do this to try to start a program in South Bay and San Francisco and everything like that. So all, all over, but yeah, for right now, it's just Alameda County. Oh, that's great. We are the privileged ones. Thanks, Michelle. Yes. I didn't yeah. know yeah. well, and thank you. I just feel like this is and, we're and we're really happy that it's continuing. So look for that, look for the um, information that will be coming out soon. 
and um, and we look forward to hearing how it goes. And Lily, I don't think you mentioned, but to state the obvious, if you were to run into anything where it was a problem, you the faculty's there for you. They want to hear, you know, it's there. There's these students are placed with you, and part of their learning experience is to to help manage that. So it's not like you're just out there on your own. That they, um, you know. Do people have any other questions or any other concerns or any thoughts? Any other things I didn't go over? Anybody except Lisa and Jenny, who are interested in the next um, uh, round of uh, uh, health heroes to come to your program? Nancy, I know you are very interested and we'll get you there. Uh, I'm interested, Shruti. Priyanka, good. What about others? You need to start saying you're interested. This is a good program. You need to have, give them one chance and, and, and just give it a try. It wouldn't hurt, hurt anybody. Um, my parents were pretty open and were super, super excited that there was somebody else in the program teaching them about health. So um, if you're thinking your parents would oppose it, uh, you will be surprised. And I have Soumya on the call, Michelle. I will quickly ask her because she had health heroes uh, come to her program, I think twice. Uh, and she had to share some of her experience. Samia, over to you. You have to unmute Samia. Yeah. Hi, yes, um, I really love them. It was a great experience. My kiddos would wait for the day. I think they came on a fr Thursday. So they would wait for the Thursday. My parents were very excited. And uh, the students enjoyed, uh, uh, they said it was a fun way. And one of them was interested in pediatric nursing. So they, they said that it was a great opportunity and they understood how to interact with the kids, what motivate them, how to talk to the kids. Um, so it was a very nice experience. That's great. Yeah, great. we have heard from some programs that that uh, you know how great it is for the our young kids to see these people in who are in yes. the sciences and people who look like them and people who mm -hmm. you know and uh so i think that that's great you know like it's that's another hidden sort of unexpected um plus of the program yeah i think my, my, my kids loved the fact that there was more people in this world except mom, dad, Mishruti, and, right. and auntie <laughs> yeah. on this planet Earth, which they can see. You know, well, I say like when, when my kids were in childcare, I just know like that it was like fresh blood. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like when, for whatever purpose. <laughs> like and they so are, the students. They come in there. You know, the students will come whether they're in their uniforms, and so they you know they look like they're a nurse. We also have male nurses that you know come, and I think that's good for little boys to see that or girls to see that too. That it's you know a variety. Um, one thing I just want to say is I know when I've been in a situation where I'm kind of barely treading water, and which some of you may be just because childcare is a really hard thing to do. The thought of having someone come in to like help me sounds like it's only more work. And I really want to say that our students are not coming in there to say, oh, what should I do? You know, they're really coming in there with a plan that they have put together with you. So it can take some burden off of you. And I, I really say that because I just think of the times when I've been really struggling and it's like, I can't think of one other person to come in because I've got so many things going on right now. But they really have their agenda. They will not be um, you know, coming up to you to say, what should I do now? They, they really you know, know what they should be doing based on what you talk to them about. They have, uh, my, I had two sets of students come. One set, uh, one set of them had a planned activity with uh, uh, the glitter. So they had sprink mm -hmm. sprinkled glitter all over and the kids went and touched the play structure everywhere and the glitter got stuck and we said that's what is uh, the germs. So we taught them how to wash hands and things. It was a great learning experience. The other set had bought charcoal. So we sprinkled mm -hmm. charcoal. They went and touched the charcoal and the entire hand was black. So we the children got to know because visual is a thing. That's how they learn. So there was germs and they had a great time. 
Just tell me my students helped you wash the charcoal off after they stopped. They were so work. sweet. They were very sweet. Very nice students. <laughs> I would love to have them back if they're yeah. coming. <laughs> great, great. Lily, I had I had um, Jason, who was a male nurse, and one of my kids went to him, and he said, "I didn't think boys become nurses. It's nurses. Uh, it's not nurse man." And I was like, "You don't say that." But my kids connected more with him than hmm. with women coming in. You know, because I totally agree with Shruti. It was the same scenario here. Because well, boys were more active or I don't know how. They were listening more. And, yeah. and they, they were like, boy. And it's one the of them energy, actually, right? Okay. Yeah. And one of them actually went and said to their mom and dad, you know, nurses can be boys and girls both. Mm -hmm. Just like Ms. Shruti and Ms. Ms. Mr. Agarwal helps in the daycare. They are both. <laughs> and I was like, my husband never helps in the daycare. He's just here to say hi and then bye. But but the idea that they don't associate a profession to a sex was very, very important for them to see that, oh, men also do this. It's not a women's job or, 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 or just in our case, daycare is not run by women. Men also come and help, you know? So that was, that was a good lesson that they learned. So you should have more boys sent to our centers. Yeah. Although we are careful, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to the fact that we we sort of set a policy that we not send two guys out to you um, at a time. Like we'll we'll mix it, a guy and a gal together. So just want, to go, want you to feel overwhelmed. It's also good for little children to see a profession, you know. Right. And you know, and it's it, like, oh, maybe I want to do that when I go get big or something. You know, I think that's also. Yeah, I mean, even having them teach about what does it mean to be a nurse and what does it mean to be a doctor, you know, it'd be really and, fun. And the other thing, uh, in fact, one was afraid to go to the doctor's office, but after seeing the nurse, mom, mom told me that he was okay going to the doctor's after for the visits. That helped too. Those stories that you, uh, you know, I, I, um, those are really those, important. Right? Lily? Yeah, it's really great for me to hear those things to tell my yeah. students because, yeah. you know, I turn around now and I need to go orient my students to this project and say, this is a really great project. And these are some of the really concrete things that you have done that have improved the health care of children. You know, whether it's they're happy, they're okay to go into the doctor or they're eating, you know, a fruit every day. I mean, those are huge things. That's, you know, that's so valuable. No, I, I agree with what Soumya said, because I had a kid and the last cohort I had, they got statoscopes for the kids, blue and pink. Um, and I had a kid who used to freak out the minute he used to see a statoscope, mm -hmm. uh, like literally have an anxiety attack. Um, so the par parent used to say, like, we used to turn the face and the kid, uh, there used to be some stuffed toys and then the doctor used to check the kid. And after this, he took the stethoscope home to check his parents. Mm -hmm. And when he had a doctor's appointment, the doctor for the first time without uh, the stuffed toys checked the kid and he did wow. not care. So that was like, a. the parents said that was magic. And I said, I didn't create it, but I will take credit for it. <laughs> but, but yes, you know, um, uh, I, I'm still scared of doctors and I'm still scared of needles. So I, I can very much relate to the fact when that parent said that the kid used to have anxiety, you know? So, so that, is, that is a plus that, that the kids have learned. And in COVID, they have not seen the doctor so much. They've not seen people so much. So they are like a little scared of everything, you know? So I think when that statoscope came in my program, that was the biggest hit of all times, like, Next time I, I, they would ask for a needle to come into my program, they are like so into it right now. But yes, I would, I would love to sign up for three more sessions if you guys would allow me to be on three more sessions because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people over here are interested too. Elaine, are you interested? You are on mute, let me unmute you. <laughs> Yes, hi, I am interested. Um, but right now I'm in the process of moving. Oh. Yeah. And 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've been here for 17 years as a renter. Gosh. Wow. And um, I've had four owners, but this one new owner, she's had this place for almost five years. And she waited until COVID last year in the middle of the storm to start wanting to bring people around here and around me knowing I'm, I'm diabetic, uh, anxiety, uh, you know, all kind of craziness. And she didn't care. Mm. And uh, I have a back garage that was turned into like a storage facility. And now she's trying to take it from me. She done called the police on me, all kind of craziness. And um, cause she's trying to change the locks. And I told her, no, that's what you're not gonna do. Cause I have 17 years worth of stuff back there and I don't have any place to put it. So I said all that to say, I'm very much interested, but I need to get restabilized first. So, yeah. I'm sorry you're going through so much, but I hope everything is gonna be fine. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel and okay. you will find that fabulous place and you will have the Healthy Rose soon in your program. Yes, definitely. Like I said, I am very much interested in it. And it sounds like fun. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I feel that I need more room also because um, I, I don't have an area in the backyard for the kids to do projects. And it just sound like what was said. The kids had a lot of fun and there was a lot of room for them to do it. Whereas it's not here, you know, because it, it it, it, it just isn't right now, you know, things are being boxed up and, you know, it, it's just not a good time right now for me. Good luck. Good that luck sounds like you are going through a lot. If you <laughs> Thank want, you. And I hope when you find a new place, it's in Alameda County, Elaine. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 it, it truly is. You can't afford to lose any more family child care providers, I'm telling you. Right, right. No, I'm, I'm staying. Good Lord, say the same. I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. uh, we also have Christy on the call, um, and I spoke to her yesterday about this. She was, she was a little apprehensive about having um, healthy rose at her place and I think she would she would be able to give you her feedback of why she was scared and if we if I have been able to convince her and change her mind that would be thing to know too Christy you can unmute yourself I don't think I I'm not muted okay so um you know well at the beginning we were just kind of scared about, you know, everything. And, yeah, everything. Have somebody come in. I just, I didn't want to take that chance. And knowing that they're going to different places, to me, it just wasn't safe. Um, and, and to me, it's my job to protect the children as well as myself. Um, and if I, you know, if I had to close down, which that you know, thankfully, knock on wood, I haven't, and I won't have to. But um, I just, you know, I just was scared. You know, it's like, you know, your people were spraying their, you know, groceries down and all that, and you know, and even like when we get together, we would just, um, we would be six feet apart, and that was kind of like it's my job to keep myself safe. Um, and there's a lot of friends I didn't see. So it was just kind of, it's my job. And that's why I didn't. Um, so yeah, that was what, and so now, I mean, things are definitely getting better. Um, thank heavens. And it, hopefully it will continue. So it's like, maybe now it wouldn't be a bad thing. But then I just, you know, at that point, it just wasn't a good time for me. Thanks for sharing what your experience was. And I know you're not alone, that there were others who felt that way. And um, 
And it's one reason why we're going back out, like and not asking for people for this year, what do you want to do? Because right now we're all living a little bit in shorter periods, like each, but in those early days, it was like every day was like a year long, right? Like then it's all new tomorrow. And um, so, yeah, like, so we're, we're just asking now, like if you're interested in, you know, these next three cohorts up and through October and then you know, in October, we'll probably send another round out for the next uh, three or four co cohorts. So um, I, I do encourage you just to consider it. And, um, and, and also just to clarify that the nurse, the student nurses aren't assigned to multiple places at once. They're assigned, this is for this segment of their uh, student work, they're assigned just to one site, one classroom kind of thing. And they may have been in a previous site prior to coming to you, um, but now they're all vaccinated. And so. so Michelle, quick question. Uh, between, two, uh, between two sites, do they get a break? Uh, like, are, are they quarantining after visiting one site for some time before they head into another program or they go back to back to back? Well, they're next, so they're not going from childcare to childcare, they're going, Go ahead, Lily. Yeah, so they yeah, they don't they they will only be in one child care um, site for the whole time they're in pediatrics. Um, they will be doing other things though. I mean, as we all are with our lives, you know, I mean, and so they are going other places and they are in the hospital. I mean, I'm not gonna say they're not in the hospital, but you know, the, the infection control guidelines are extremely stringent in the hospital. And um you know, it's probably one of the safer places to be just, you know, just because people are so consistent. I mean, everyone is immunized. Everyone is constantly wearing masks and they're wearing N95s and they're washing their hands a hundred times a day. And, you know, so, so they, they, I, I'm not going to tell you they're not there, but it's, um, but their, but their, um, you know, exposure is really limited as far as the hospital is not letting a lot of students in and them, you know, following the, the guidelines. So, and, but yeah, from, yeah, so, but they are going, you know, they're in nursing school. And so they're going from one, one course, all their teach, all we're, um, the one thing that's kind of nice to know that when they're in pediatrics, they're not taking any other classes besides pediatrics. So they're not doing this. And then they're also going and doing a med surge rotation and going into a geriatric facility and then doing pediatrics. And so that's, it's a kind of an immersion program. It's a five, it's only five weeks. The whole semester is only five weeks long and they do 15 weeks of work in five weeks. And so it's all just peds. So that, you know, that will decrease the contagion a little bit. But, you know, I, I understand that the fear you know, and the, and the hesitancy and whatever we can do to try to, um, you know, just decrease that for you. I'd be happy to talk. I don't know if you were on Christy, I think, is it Christy? At the beginning when we said that um, the requirements now are that at Samuel Merritt is it's required that all students and faculty are immunized. So, and they have to be fully immunized by the time class starts. Um, so that's, you know, that's, hopefully a little bit, you know, allays some people's fears. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely is important. But and we I, can also work with people as far as if, if there's something that's not quite feeling right. I mean, and that's why I'm kind of the coordinator over all of it, all of for the nursing school. You know, if there's something that's not working, we can work it out. You know, this is, this is you know, nothing's in stone really, you know, it's... It, um, and I feel we, we would be more comfortable with nurses coming in when they are vaccinated than unvaccinated or in my um, uh, licensing program analyst walking through our doors. So <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case right there because we know we haven't been given that assurance from licensing mm, that they yeah. will all be vaccinated. So, so if anybody else has any questions, please unmute and ask. Or if anybody wants to share an experience or a fear or a concern about having them. Yeah, I would like to share my experience. Sure, Priyanka, go ahead. 
uh, so when i had health heroes at my place uh, we really had a wonderful time with them and my children all the children are very excited they were very excited and they worked with them very comfortably actually they started usually they started the program by reading a book that is a gems or i mean not for sharing book maybe this the gems are not for sharing book and they were uh, like children like totally um, involved with that story then later then they applied some paint to the children's hand and taught them singing the song that is uh, mm-hmm. tops and bottoms tops and bottoms in between in between scrub them all together scrub them all together nice and clean squeaky <laughs> clean so this song and the children learned that song and i continue teaching the same song for a week mm-hmm. and it's been like about 7 uh, 8 months they came to my place still children are continue uh, singing the song every time they go when when they go for hand washing hmm. that's great so, yeah thank you for sharing that that's yeah. wonderful and i, and I would love it if, i would love it if my nursing students could remember things 8 months later you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so it was sort of good i i yeah. think one of the messages that we're that we're emphasizing is that it isn't a one and done uh kind of thing with because health is so much broader than just that the the germ thing right and like that it, when we started with covid that was an an emphasis but now we're really moving you know i i can't wait till we get to oral health and teeth brushing and some of that right um so but just all kinds of things of around you know exercise and and just mindfulness yeah and uh some things that really can help you support the kids who have been living in stressful um times as we all have Right. I was going to say that the anxiety, you know, and, and what we can do to help with that is really valuable, you know, especially as we're sort of coming off it, then sort of the effects, you know, sort of some of the long-term effects of that can help with. So Shruti, th- thank you for sharing, for inviting us. And I thank you all for your evening um, and sharing with us and giving us your stories and the wisdom and um, your experiences. It's been so great. We'll send out um, the flyer to you. And I hope, Shruti, that I can come back at a later time around some other topics that I'd love family child care feedback on. And I just please, feel please. like you're a group of experts. And yeah. um, as we're looking forward with Measure C, um, and and the tax collection and what what we need to be doing to support family child care i would love to um have some discussions with you all at any time but before i let you go michelle i know nancy had a burning question in the beginning oh. of the call uh, about first five so uh oh that's right yeah. she changed it I would like to personally thank you for the grant and the air purifiers. They are huge and we have a story behind it uh, because the collection was really difficult for us, but we we are enjoying it. Thank you so much. I'm actually putting a new unit in my backyard and I'm waiting to put one of them there. Uh, but I'm sure all, whoever has got those air purifiers really appreciate. Um, well, I think that is great. I, I mean, I went and bought one for myself because, I, you know, I, after what we all lived through last year around the fires and then compounded by everybody's telling you, you know, open the windows and then suddenly everybody's telling you close the window and what was that, <laughs> what, especially family child care, what are you all supposed to do? So I, I don't think we're done with fire season. And yes, um, you just started I, it for this year. Yeah, yeah, just planning ahead to, uh, you know, is a really good idea but thank you so much thank you michelle. michelle thank you for all your support for us uh during this uh no time. thank you all i I'm well, i want to say that too you. i just want to say thank you so much for all the work that you all do with children i mean you know that's it is invaluable the work that you're doing with them and um i just want to thank you very much for doing that and well for- with the support of your group and Michelle, you guys, um, you know, we couldn't do the things that we do without the support from Shruti, the, the association. And, you know, pass it on to your nurses that 
it's a good experience for us also to to let the kids know that there are safe people out there mm -hmm. that you yeah. know there's a lot of kids who get scared from the public you yeah. know you're stranger danger not everybody's stranger not everybody's bad yeah you so, know there are good nice. people out there and you guys are part of that group so thank you and thank your nurses for us and your students and that's you know that's that's such a good thing that you said. Actually, there's yeah. stranger danger, and we are not strangers, but not not other nurses. Right. So it's it's a nice thing. But Lily, I want to say thank you, nurses, for educating me, mm. because I was so confused with the immunizations and how they're written. When every doctor's office sends the uh, the record to us, <laughs> and they educated me, and I was like, "Can I have you on VFCC call to educate others?" Because it's so crazy. Kaiser writes it differently. John Muir writes it differently. Oh, yeah. Another doctor would write it differently. And I'm like, don't give me the medication name. Tell me which department this goes in to make my life easy. Yeah. So thank, thank them from our sides. We, we really appreciate what they are doing. And I know it's not easy for them because they are still studying. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a huge toll on them as well. But the smile they bring for the little ones is really, really um, valuable to us. Well, and you are also teaching my students. I want to say it, it really goes both ways. Not that I'm asking you to teach them, but <laughs> by watching providers who have worked with children for years and years, you know, that is teaching them how to interact with kids. And that's a huge part of pediatrics. You know, my mm -hmm. mantra, I always tell them when I, when I, you know, give them my very first lecture, my mantra is kids aren't small adults. And, you know, there's about how many different ways, physiologically, you know, develop me, psychologically, but communication and things like that is, is so important. And they learn that from you. So, so it's, it really is a two-way street, you know, it's, it's service learning in the, in the essence of it, as far as giving a service, but also learning from that. So. And I say this all the time, the one good things that come out of COVID are the ideas that people are coming up with right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the nursing teaching programs, you know, those things, the Zoom calls, the family that we've gotten. Um, it yeah, just- The family childcare providers are getting. Finally, yeah, we are being acknowledged it's, somewhere. It's yeah. just nice. And we, you know, we all support each other and it's just great to, you know, I, I, I look forward to trying to meet people face-to-face -face now because I get to match them outside of their box. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for letting so, us so come. much. And I look forward to meeting with you again. And I hope you have a great experience with uh, yeah. heroes. Look forward to that uh, flyer coming to yeah. an email near you. And <laughs> um, and if you do need support, Donna Marie is available. It's in the chat. Donna Marie is available at, at Hively to support you through if you if you have any trouble with the links or you're not sure how to answer a question or anything like that. So Donna Marie sits on our weekly health heroes um, check-ins and um, can represent issues for you as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank you. I look forward to seeing you and good luck with your movie lane. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank Bye -bye. You. Bye, Bye bye. Thank you.